the gateway to the West, Cardinal Nation. St. Louis, Missouri is the home to some of the most brilliant physicians in the world. These doctors are pushing science to its limits, healing patients in new innovative ways, and doing it at the same time they are teaching the next generation of doctors how to save lives. Meet Dr. Lee New Farperi, who specializes in complex retina disorders, and Dr. Ricardo Rodriguez, vitreal retinal surgeon, who specializes in retinal diseases and ocular oncology, the only two uveitis specialists in Missouri. This is the science of healing. Eyes are presumed to be king of the body. And I think that's very true because if you don't have vision, you really cannot navigate in your world. You are dependent on other people for everything. Sight, I take it for granted, like we all do. Most of our patients take their sight for granted until they are faced with a potential loss of sight. I think it's, it's the best gift that we have in our lives to have vision, to be able to see all the things that we love around us. I came home and I was going to mow, so I went ahead and started the lawnmower up and as soon as I started it, it picked up a rock, I, I moved my body and it threw a rock right into my eye. You know the worst things that really we see and they don't have really good outcome are traumas and globe ruptures. It knocked me about eight foot backwards. I'd say probably the rock was probably doing 90 mile an hour when it hit me in the eye. The eye is a very resilient structure, but it's very, it's also very delicate. The retina has the thickness of cellophane. Of course, it knocked me back a little ways and I couldn't see. And I knew something was serious, so I called somebody to take me to the emergency room. And they couldn't do nothing for me at the emergency room, so they sent me to SLU Hospital. So he ended up in the ED right after that he couldn't see. He had extensive hemorrhages and bleeding inside the eye. A lot of things go through your mind when you can't see. I had already figured out I'd done lost everything. I didn't know what I was going to do. You take for granted. Your eyes too for granted. You need to protect them no matter what. So we saw at clinic later after his emergency visit because the hemorrhage is extensive inside the eye, you don't have a view to see the retina. In those cases, we have to check the retina status with ultrasound, the special ultrasound of the eye that we have. They gave me medicine, sent me home, and waited for all the blood to get back out of it. Uh, but in one week follow-up, then on ultrasound, his retina was detached. So in those cases, we can't wait. We had to take him to the OR. So we did surgery and everything went fine. We cleaned the blood, put the retina back in place, did all the measures that we needed to. During the surgery, I started seeing it before she's even done. My eyesight started coming back and that was a great feeling. Really, really nice. And I saw him recently in one month follow-up and thankfully he has fully recovered actually his vision, which is very fortunate. I couldn't have got any luckier than to get Dr. Perry. Out of five hospitals the night they transported me, SLU was the only one that could get me in. It worked perfect because I got the best doctor, my opinion, is the best doctor they've got. She did an awesome job. I'm very thankful. She, will, she doesn't know how thankful I am because I don't know what I'd done if she hadn't have done what she did. She told me I would lose it if I didn't have surgery. So I had no option. One way or another, I wanted to have surgery to be able to get my sight back. He's happy and he's now, he has learned now to use his safety glasses and he's using them all the time. When you lose your eyesight, you lose everything. You don't, you don't know what to do, where to go. You have to depend on somebody else, and it's a different world. I really protect everything I do now. Glasses, no matter what, second thought, everything. Because I don't want to go through it again.
St. Louis University has an incredible trauma service where we're able to accelerate the care of these patients in a, in a rapid fashion and to provide them with care for traumatic injuries to the eye and other services in a way that we can restore the vision and prevent further loss of vision. But it is critical that patients not wait that if they have a loss of vision or a traumatic injury to the eye to seek care immediately. I can see just like I did before. I, I, I need my sight to be able to mess with my horses. I need it to mow, I need weed eat, work on my fences, my barn, everything. I can go back to doing what I was doing before. Awesome doctor. When I started writing about 20 years ago, they used to say that it was the subspecialty of the future. And now I live the subspecialty of the moment, of the present. Dr. Rodriguez is one of the most well-published retina specialists in the country. Very well versed in research and has a lot of, had a lot of experience in international ophthalmology. So he brings that to St. Louis University. So in the past we used to treat uh, disease just with laser, for example, but uh, with laser we could only stabilize vision. We could never provide vision improvement. And now with the sur new surgeries and the medications we use inside the eye, we can give patients a lot of visual improvement. I was referred to Dr. Rodriguez at SLU because I was having difficulties with my eye and he evaluated the right eye. And once he did that, he knew what was going on because my vision in the right eye was distorted. I could see people from a distance. I knew it was a man, but I couldn't see their face. She's a lovely lady. She used to have a hole in the middle of the retina, in the center of the retina, in an area called the macula. It was like, when you be at a carnival and they had the funny mirrors, that's how everybody was looking out of the right eye. The symptoms of a macular hole are very disarming to a patient because they lose the finest acuity, they lose the detail while they're able to see all the periphery normally. What made me so happy and grateful for Dr. Rodriguez, he just didn't look at the right eye, which most people do, but he looked at the left eye. And when he looked at the left eye, and that's when we found out that both eyes, the left eye started doing what the right eye was doing. And if he wasn't efficient, we never would have caught him. As we age, the vitreous, which is the jelly-filled substance that fills the eye, naturally shrinks and detaches from the retina. He said to me, uh, we have to operate right away. So I went in that Friday. They did the evaluations and everything. Tuesday, I had surgery on the right eye. I wasn't scared because I didn't know the gravity of it, what was going on. If I knew the gravity of it, what was going on, oh, I probably would have been nervous. The treatment for a macular hole is to detach the adhesions between the vitreous and the retina and to allow the retina to adhere to the back of the eye. This has to be done with pressure. One of the mechanisms of surgery is to, in, to insert and inject a gas and to have the patient sit or lie face down so that the gas bubble pushes the retina against the back of the eye and attaches the macula to its proper function. This is very disconcerting to the patient as they have to lay face down for a significant period of time, but the, the surgery can be successful if we're able to allow the retina to adhere to the wall of the eye. It closed up. Two weeks later, he did a procedure on the left eye. Many times we are able to identify areas of the retina that may be susceptible to damage in the future. And many of those treatments don't require a surgery. Many of those 
preventative treatments can be done in the office with a laser or an injection that can be done simply while the patient's awake in the office. We did a similar technique for the other eye, but we just use uh, some details of the technique. For example, those membranes that we remove, we usually have to remove the membranes in more advanced holes. When the hole is smaller, sometimes just the gas is enough to close the hole. And when I got the response, he said both holes are closed. And you talking about happy? I was happy because I am a, a Sunday school leader at my church. And, and not just that, I'm a reader. I'm the main reader. And then we have other people that read if I'm not there. And so I love it. And that gave me the quality of life because I am a reader from a little girl all the way up to the age I am now, which I just had a birthday. And I love reading and I love investigating. <laughs> and I love if somebody say they need this, that, and the other. I, you know, I always tell people I was Google before Google became Google because I was searching research to try to figure it out. She was very happy and she also did her job, which is the face down positioning. It's very uh, annoying for a few days to be face down. It demands a lot of discipline, but uh, it was very helpful. I'm so grateful for the SLU care doctors and saying the SLU care doctors, the care is the important part because they do care. He could have just looked at that right eye and finished and said, oh, this is what she complaining about or have a concern about, I should say. But because he cares and the SLU care physician cares, they took out time to make sure both eyes was okay. Another thing I love about Dr. Rodriguez is after he get through examining me, he sits there and he asks me how my family is doing and how's everything going with my mother and how's everything with my brother and my sisters and how's everything going with you? You know, so I really appreciate him for his wisdom and knowledge. It's, it's wonderful to be in an institution where, where we live the mission. Uh, to care for these patients mind body and soul that it's not just about the disease that that patient has across sitting across in the chair across from you it's taking care of that person and and realizing that you're supported by this that that is the mission of what slu care does My dad been having problems with macular degeneration and glaucoma. And so he decided he wanted to go off on his own and go see this optometrist. And he gave him some medicine. And the next thing I know, his eyes were just like bloodshot red. And I said, Daddy, what's wrong with your eyes? I really started to get really concerned. A vision is something that I have realized during all my years in medicine, that people are the most scared from losing it. Nobody can stand going blind, can even think about it. And so immediately I called SLU, they got them right in. Vitreo retinal surgery is actually one of the most complex surgical specialties. It's like the film in the camera. The retina takes the image that you see, that you and I see, and converts it via electrical impulses to an image for the brain. But if the retina is not working, everything else fails. Dr. Peary, bless her heart, was his, his doctor, and she, she just took over and she took care of my dad as if he was her own. So when I saw him first time, he had several things together. Uh, his vision was slightly decreased. He had significant inflammation in front part of the eye. He had history of glaucoma, was using some eye drops. Some of that inflammation of the eye surface I could see is the side effect of the eye drops he's using. 
but he also had extensive intraocular inflammation, which we didn't know why, because it was the first time it was being documented. It was not in his previous records. And then on a more comprehensive exam of his eye, it looked like he also had some retina problems in which looked like to be a vein occlusion in back of his eye. So I had to have a detailed conversation with him that he didn't have just one thing and we had to go one step at a time and work with all these and at the same time work for that inflammation to see what is causing that inflammation. She discovered that he had an autoimmune uh, condition in his eye that is called uveitis. There's a lot of time that we don't really know why inflammation happens. But there are initially when we see a patient 30, 40% of time, we can find some underlying disease in the body. Most of the time without showing any symptoms and signs, but causes the inflammation in the eye. So we have to look for that underlying and dig down and find it, which requires extensive history taking from the patient, checking their review of system, their exposures, even their job, traveling, if they're exposed to any with people with infectious disease, and also some kind of autoimmune disorders which might cause inflammation in the eye. So it is something that really requires a connection of the eye with the, with the whole medicine in the body. He has some other conditions. I don't know if any of them are connected, but Perhaps they, they may, and if they are, it's, you know, it's a good score for Dr. Peary. We switched his eye drops, referred him to our glaucoma specialist. In the meantime that I ordered the lab work for uh, looking for his underlying inflammation, I had to start him on topical corticosteroid eye drops as well to see if there is any response and see him back in a week while waiting for the lab work. Thankfully, in a week, he dramatically improved, and that's um, one of the good things about one of the uveitis problems in the eye, which is probably caused by a disease called sarcoidosis. Sometimes they don't have symptoms in the body, they might have only in the eye, and they have usually a dramatic response to treatment. His eyes, like, immediately turned around, like, really fast, and he's doing so much better. His eyes are so much better. His, all his infectious workup thankfully came back negative and I kept watching him. Our glaucoma specialist watched him for his pressure and at some point I was going to do um, an imaging which we call fluorescein angiography. It's kind of like a dye test to evaluate the vessels in the retina to see where the leakage or swelling comes from. But on the day that I wanted to do that, his swelling also was resolved. That means that all that swelling in the retina also was from this mild inflammation and responded to treatment. Since then, thankfully, he has been quiet. I have been watching him and his vision actually has improved to a level that he was able to get his driver's license last week. And he's um, able to drive. His glaucoma is not very severe, so he can drive. He fell in love with her. <laughs> And that was one of the main reasons we recruited her, her ability to not only be technically one of the great surgeons, but the ability to connect with people and the ability to be compassionate. It was amazing. It was really amazing. Having two such highly skilled vitro-retinal surgeons uh, is important for our community, it's important for our residency program, it's important for SLU care as a whole. Additionally, they're the only uveitis specialists in Missouri at all. They are the only ones that have special training in inflammatory diseases of the eye and retina. So it's a niche that we are able to provide for our community, both St. Louis and the Illinois community. They're a good team, excellent team. You couldn't ask for a better team than what SLU has. We need to develop research in order to develop new ways to treat the diseases of the eye, especially when it comes to the retina. So I've been doing research in retina since the beginning of my career for 20 years. And in general, in a simple way, 
Uh, we like to investigate the safety and efficiency of medications that we inject inside the eye and substances that we inject inside the eye. There really isn't a good way for medicines to penetrate the retina. And that's what one of Dr. Rodriguez's research interest is in drug delivery to the retina. 20 years ago, maybe we can say age-related macular degeneration, which has two types, dry type and wet type. There was no certain treatment for it. But in the past 16 years, I can say it started in 2005, these anti-VEGF medications were introduced, which are helping in treating the disease. It is not a permanent cure for it, but definitely it improves it and prevents that extensive loss of vision. Uh, the medicine was originally um, introduced to treat cancer. It was approved for metastatic colorectal cancer, and the concept was that that medicine shrinks the vessels, so the vessels to the cancer are shrunk, and then cancer cells would die out. Around 2005, 6 they found that this medicine, very small amount when injected in the eye, is helping those vessels in macular degeneration or some other disease like diabetes as well, some vascular occlusions, several other things uh, to regress, to shrink. But I can say that this has revolutionized the wet macular degeneration treatment in the past 15 years. And also for dry type, we do not have a treatment but now there are some other studies going on for medications which might help. They are thinking of what is causing it, what is the underlying, and based on those, some medications are developed. Actually, the SLU is a site for one of these clinical trials, and we are recruiting patients now, and then we will see what happens if we get good results in the two or three years. That might become another treatment for dry macular degeneration. We are going to start a clinical trials here of gene therapy for retina dystrophies, for example, retinitis pigmentosa. So there are several gene therapies starting, and this is something we did here at St. Louis University. We are doing genetic tests for all patients, and we are now analyzing the, what type of genes are most common here so we can conduct the clinical trials for those patients. But this is something that's not so advanced yet. We're still in the very early stages of research. We're at the point where we can make these incredible diagnostic treatment decisions, but we're not there with the treatment modalities, the drug therapy and the gene therapy that will change the way we treat diseases in the future. Dr. Rod Rodriguez being a part of a bigger picture of research and everything, I automatically knew it when I met him. He go a little bit deeper, he study, he researches, and you can tell he want to find more, how to do it more, how to perfect it. We're very proud of our residency program and we recruit physicians like Dr. Perry and Dr. Rodriguez whose main goal is not only the patient care but also to allow and educate these new young physicians in how to take care of patients in the future. I have a, a cousin who is in DC and he has always, always told me to go to a teaching hospital because they are the absolute best. And it's true. I myself am going through treatment and, and I drive 75 miles one way to get care. I'm worn out, <laughs> but it's well worth it. We are pretty much a referral center for the rare problems in the eyes, the rare retinal disorders or everything else. And um, there are resources to more evaluate their problems, more time can be spent with them, and look into their problems in more detail rather than in uh, private practices. And that's the whole purpose of ac academics, because we can help them. All, most academics are like that, that they are up to date with all the new treatments, and if anything comes up that patients might benefit from it, we can, we can just offer to them as soon as it is out. All our specialties require an interaction and an ability to work together, which we're able to do 
we're fortunate to have this new uh, Center for Specialized Medicine where all the specialties at SLU Care are all housed in one building, which just enables us to walk across the hall and, and talk, to, uh, talk to our colleagues. One of the most gratifying gifts that I get every day is the patient that comes back to me and shares with me what our department or what one of our specialists has done for them to allow them to be able to drive, to have their independence, to preserve their vision. So I'm so glad for the uh, flu care physicians because they have that care. They have that care and that's what people need. That's why people are despondent, depressed. They just want to know somebody care, that somebody is concerned. And that's what the SLU care physicians do. I think it's the most satisfying thing when you see a patient comes to you, they are smiling, their sight is back. And I think this is the same for every physician or provider to see how patients are happy and they are responding and they can go back to their normal lives. I recommend anybody that needs to have specialists, I would suggest going to SLU. And as far as I care, Dr. Perry is A1. I would not go anywhere else. Absolutely not. Slow care.